Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we have some new polling post-convention bump to look at nationwide and Kamala Harris is not getting a convention bump. And this much is true. You have a poll from Echelon Insights which has Donald Trump at 49%, Kamala Harris at 48%, the same pollster had Joe Biden leading before the debate. And it's true that this poll before the debate was to the left of some other polls at the time, but it's also to the right of some polls at the time. And it's possible you saw some response bias that, you know, gave Donald Trump's numbers a little bit of a boost before the debate and definitely after the debate. Now you're kind of seeing the opposite. And some of these pollsters tend to be immune more so than others, and those are the pollsters showing like the, you know, least amount of swing. The same pollsters that were kind of, I guess you would say, a little bearish on Trump's chances, whether they're right-leaning or dem-leaning historically, in terms of their ability to be immune to response bias this cycle, that could be what's playing a role. And we see another poll today out of Yahoo News, which was probably one of the most Biden-friendly pollsters. They were very bearish on Trump. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, a few months ago, they had Biden leading. Even their poll, you know, in July, Trump v. Harris, was a tie. And Harris, since the whole convention, she's only gone up 1%. And if she's at 47, he's at 46, that is not enough for Kamala Harris to win the Electoral College because keep in mind, the popular vote does not dictate the election winner. Trump could lose it by like three to four and still win in the Electoral College just because of the way certain states have been trending recently, just because of the way that, um, you know, the Electoral College, in terms of its demography, there's a lot of focus on that Rust Belt region where Donald Trump does have a unique point of strength. So you look at that and it's like, yeah, Trump is doing well. And we talked a lot about Pennsylvania. We talked a lot about Georgia and North Carolina. We just pulled North Carolina. We'll be talking about it in tomorrow's video. But in terms of the other swing states, the one Southwest. I thought we would take a look at some recent polling out of Arizona as well as Nevada and kind of see the lay of the land in those states because we know Donald Trump, he's doing well, you know, in terms of the polling. Now, not in terms of some of these other aggregates that have these polls in there you've never heard of that are blatantly admitting to be push polls and they're still putting them in the aggregate. We're talking about major pollsters, major pollsters from, you know, accredited universities and accredited uh, media organizations, as well as other pollsters that have had a decent track record. We're talking about real clear politics because what we see in some of these other aggregates, I'm not going to name names, a lot of BS and that we know. But in terms of Arizona, you see this out of Noble Predictive Insights, formerly referred to as OH Predictive Insights. They typically pull the Southwest. Donald Trump in Arizona, he has a lead. He's up on Kamala Harris 47 to 44, and he is leading, and he's basically clearing the margin of error with 1,000 respondents in this poll. Now, it is before the convention, but if anything, we've seen a reverse bump since the convention, so it is kind of tough to really tell. But either way, 47 to 44, that is a good poll. For Donald Trump. It means that he is leading Arizona, if it's true. And we've covered some of these other polls in terms of the New York Times, where we looked into their poll and they had ridiculous, you know, responses for other questions that just were not compatible with the polls in, uh, you know, Nevada in the same group of polls. Same thing we saw with Bloomberg uh, Morning Consult, Morning Compost, we should say. Uh, same thing we saw at a Cook Political Report there. But some of these other polls, you know, Rasmussen, they get this, you know, reputation of being very right-leaning. But in terms of Arizona in the past 2020, they underestimated Donald Trump at the state level. Uh, you know, some of these other pollsters as well. And I think we need more polls, but this is like the first pollster that's dropped that isn't really, you know, typically leaning one way or another. And Donald Trump is in a very good position in the state of Arizona. He leads the polling in Arizona in August you look back at 2016, polls underestimated him by a couple points, actually a little bit more than that, um, in 2020, 2016, probably around two to three points in those specific years in the state. August polling typically 
always favors Democrats. You can go back even 2022 in these key races where the final polls overestimated Republicans. They underestimated them in the month of August, and that needs to be taken into consideration uh, because you do typically have that August response bias mixed with the Kamala Harris surge, uh, you know, in terms of her replacing Biden, and you're kind of having all this enthusiasm, which is kind of plateauing, and we see that, but still, you look at Nevada as well, another crucial state. You talk about the border being a big issue in both of these states. Nevada, the no tax on tips policy, Donald Trump did a event in the state that was specifically revolving around that last week. And we know polls in Nevada, they can overestimate Republicans. Even in 2020, though, at the presidential level, the polls were 100% dead on accurate in the state. And you look at this, you have Donald Trump, even in a batch of polling that was not super favorable to him in the New York Times, he was leading Um, by a point in that batch of polls. He's up in the aggregate by 1.4%, and he's at 47.4% overall, so he's getting close to 48. And these polls look good for Trump, but the raw data looks better for Donald Trump. And I think that's something people need to take into consideration, especially when they analyze some of these states. And you could look at North Carolina's registration data where Republicans have gained a couple hundred thousand on net since the 2020 election and say that that it's really good. You could do the same thing in Pennsylvania. And I think it's encouraging in both states, but it is important to understand that some of that shift is these you know, ancestrally Democrat Trump voters switching their party affiliation to independent or Republican. But in terms of Arizona and Nevada, Arizona's been moving to the left, and the registration data was for a while, but that's done a complete and total 180. Democrats were hoping to flip the registration edge at this point, but still Republicans said, nah, you know, they doubled their registration edge from 2020 to now, it's 260,000. And in fact, compared to the midterms, it's still up by a decent amount. And Trump did expand his support percentage wise. The anti Trump vote in 2020 was a little bit more consolidated, and that is true behind Biden. Will they be that consolidated behind somebody like Kamala Harris? Even so, if Trump continues gaining and adding voters to his coalition, as the data shows him doing, it's going to be very difficult for them to kind of buck that trend and go out there and win the state. Same thing with Nevada, where Republicans, they were down in the voter registration edge by 87,000 votes in 2020. That now has been cut to below 30,000 votes. So that's a gain of 58,000 votes. That is almost double what the margin of victory for Biden in 2020 was in the state. And like I've said, this election is going to come down to turnout, but still, this is an indicator that is huge for Donald Trump. He gained in every county percentage-wise in Arizona in 2020, Nevada in 2020. The only difference is that the anti-Trump vote was less consolidated in 2016 compared to where it is now. But after the past four years, one could imagine that Donald Trump could continue to do even better. And these states do come down to big metro areas. And we talk about what Donald Trump needs to do. If he just manages to keep Maricopa County, um, you know, if he gains one point in Maricopa County, let's adjust it on the election shuffler. If we could adjust it to uh, a, like a one point gain for Donald Trump compared to 2020, um, if we could just find a way to adjust it. There we go. You look at the state, already it flips back. That doesn't take into consideration gains Trump could make in a place like Yuma, where it's been really hit by the border crisis or uh, Pima. But he just got to hold his own, improve just a tiny bit in Maricopa County. And there are places in the county, it's a big county, where he has been gaining and where he can do that. And that would be huge. It would give him the state of Arizona. In terms of Nevada, We could talk about, oh, we could run it up in the rural areas, which he's already doing. We could talk about maybe he turns a little bit of a corner in a place like Reno, and he might. But in terms of the state, it comes down to Clark County. If he's able to narrow that margin in Clark County, if we could narrow it just to, you know, a five-point win, a five-point win for Kamala Harris in Clark County, a little bit less than that here, he would take the state. Uh, If it's a a five-and-a-half-point win, I believe, if, if we were to... Um, do the margin on that as well, it would still give Donald Trump a win in the state of Nevada. 
And given certain trends, it's possible a four-point shift to the right there in Vegas. Yes, it's very possible Trump could do it. He would take the state of Nevada. And these states combine for 17 electoral votes. So let's say Kamala Harris does manage to really spike black turnout and she delivers the state of Georgia and Michigan because of it. Donald Trump could win the election outright if he just takes the state of Pennsylvania, which is, again, we've covered it extensively, but I believe there's a lot of reason to believe he's going to carry that too. But this election comes down to some key swing states, and Trump at the right time is making improvements in Arizona. He's making improvements in Nevada compared to 2020, and he's holding his own as it stands today. And in terms of the national polling, the fact that you know the latest two polls that actually have a track record that we've seen have the popular vote still as a jump ball should be very encouraging because Democrats just had their convention. They just had their convention. They should be up by like seven, eight points if, if we're going to you know look at history and see where these convention bumps are. And a lot of convention bumps typically are response bias, and a lot of them do just tend to you know kind of be this temporary thing. But the fact is, we're close to election day. She's not seeing a bump at all. Yeah, that's got to be brutal for her. She should be peaking now. People usually peak during conventions when they're running for president. So that's very telling. And in terms of these swing states, that's where the election's going to be won. But if the popular vote is that close, she might not win any of these big seven swing states, which is a brutal blow to her chances as a campaign. But we got to do our part and make sure we get people in those states that we know registered to vote and get them out to vote. And if we're voting in those states, take as many people with us as we possibly can to make sure we get those votes. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.